Thank you to the MC for a very kind introduction. Welcome to Fascinates and thank you for joining us today. For many of us, a forest is the place where we go to unwind, where we enjoy trees around us, the sounds of birds that sing happily and enjoy fresh oxygen that trees and other plants provide us. But below the surface of the ocean, we will find another forest, which are coral reefs. Our Earth is surrounded by 70% of water, yet only 20% has been explored. Scientists so far covered only 1% of this, which are the forests under the sea, coral reef. Just like forests on land, coral reefs are the oldest living habitats underwater and home to nearly 2 million animals and plants that scientists currently know. Today, I want to take everyone on an adventure exploring the oceans and coral reef. What is it so special about ocean for all of us Malaysian? First, coral reef and the oceans are exciting because we are surrounded by the South China Sea and Straits of Malacca. The waters are located within the coral triangle, the world of centers of marine biodiversity. Maybe some of us had fish for lunch or dinner yesterday. Your meal was thanks to the coral triangle because it supports more than 2,000 species of fish in the world. Now that traveling is allowed after two years of isolation from nature due to pandemic COVID-19, we are considering of taking a vacation. For many of us, choosing an island with the view of the ocean sounds like a great idea. We are blessed with beautiful islands, and that became the hotspots for foreign tourists as well as locals. Just look at the island map of Malaysia. You can find coral reef at most of this island, starting from Peninsula Malaysia across to Sabah. Why are we so attracted to the ocean? If we look back into the history, we are known for being a seafarers. Our cultures are tied to the oceans and its unique features along the Malay Peninsula. Since olden days, we have the best port in the world, Malacca. Our people are being known as skillful explorers with vast knowledge about the ocean. In the picture, you can see me cruising on the boat or simply taking a walk by the seaside and looking upon the rocks. What am I looking at? Just like my ancestors who was a sea captain, I inherited his genes and patience by taking a series of ocean expedition to work on malacology. This later became my career and vocation. But what is malacology? It is the study of soft-bodied animals or mollusca, such as snails, clams, oysters, and squid. Mollusca is the second largest group in animal kingdom after insects. They are very successful in inhabiting all types of environment in the world, just like this rocky shore where you can see periwinkle snails on cracks and crevices among the rocks. In my research, I study coral-eating snails, all these pink colored snails that can be found among coral reef in Malaysia. Climate change impact are all around us and we have to ask ourselves the questions, what are the relations between global warming, coral reef and the snails? Coral reef worldwide are under threat due to global warming. A report by Reef Check Malaysia in 2020 showed that Malaysian coral reef have been slowly declining in the last five years, and we assess as fair in status. Human activities and burnings of fossil fuels has increased the amounts of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases are trapped around the world like a blanket. Such a process has made the ocean warmer by changes in temperature, and the amounts of sunlight available to coral reef. The oceans getting warmer cause the phenomenon coral bleaching. Let me tell you how this happens. Coral is a kind of animal, not stone as many think. 
Isn't it amazing that something that looks like stone is in fact made by millions of animals? Corals are associated with plant cells called zooxanthellae. Zooxanthellae and algae use carbon dioxide to make food through photosynthesis. They recycle phosphorus and nitrogen so that the corals get not only food but also materials to build its house made of calcium carbonate, the white material you see in a coral. This is the same element found in human teeth. Each of these holes consists of one animal named polyps. Corals are known as megabuilders that clump themselves to form groups or colonies. There are various forms of coral that can be found underwater. For example, branching, lettuce, vase, mushroom, or even look like human brain. And corals get colors due to different wavelengths absorbed by zooxanthellae and reflected differently in the water. Now that you know coral is an animal that lives in dense group and is associated with plant cells called zooxanthellae to obtain food, so how does global warming cause coral bleaching? Well, zooxanthellae or the algae begin to expel or move out from the color, corals when too warm and slowly eventually the coral turns white. Remember how coral used to have vibrant colors? When bleaching happens, we can only see the white skeleton be left behind. This is how it looks like between the healthy and bleached corals. The symbiotic win-win relationship between corals and algae zooxanthellae are quickly lost due to the warming phenomenon caused by climate changes. Now, this is where my expertise is needed and your support is critical. When the coral is hurting during bleaching event, there is one animal that takes advantage to feed on coral tissue, just like when a human gets a wound. If not treated, the tissue will attract maggots. In this case, these maggots are snails which surround coral and start to eat its tissue. My team and I found in Pula Redang that we have at least five different types of snails feedings on coral reef in the islands. Snails use thousand sets of teeth called radula to scrape coral tissues clean. With their small bodies, ability to reproduce in large numbers and ability to attach and hide are between crevices of coral, the snail is able to successfully occupy and overtake the ecosystem. And due to this, my team and I conducted monitoring work to check on the status of bleaching and snails collections. As you can see, many of these snails can be found underneath the corals where snorkelers and divers often look past. They like to aggregate and live together. They can live up to 45 years and during the day, they hide at the bottom of the corals. At night, they crawl up to the corals and feed. Just like corals form a group to make colonies, snails do the same with one female alone able to produce 100,000 baby snails. And imagine if this number multiplies over time. Are we underestimating them? Perhaps. Between global warming and coral-eating snails, are coral reefs at risk? Yes, because corals are not only fighting to survive due to bleaching, but also facing attack from snails. Corals are keystone species, which means they hold and lock together animals and plants in the marine ecosystem. Why should we be worried if there is no coral reef, you might ask? About 25% of marine life and 500 million people who live on the coast worldwide depends on reef habitats. Moreover, coral reef buffer wave actions by reducing its energy by up to 95%, reducing threats from tsunami, and they act 
as a natural coastal barrier. If we take up corals out of it, the equations, marine ecosystem will collapse. We will lose our main source of protein, fish. Not only that, we will also lose all these Malaysian iconic species such as the whale shark, dugong, dolphin, and bumhead parrotfish, to name only a few species connected to our Malaysian heritage. Just like the forest on land, we are also start losing our forests underwater, the coral reef. Should we worry? Of course, and just like how we are concerned and take action when we start losing our forests, we need, to, we need to do the same for coral reef and oceans. How can we help as an individual or as a group? There are ways each of us can do our part to protect our reef and our heritage. The use of energy efficient light bulbs reduce greenhouse gas emission. So change your light bulbs if you are still use incandescent light. Next, safe water. The less water you use, the less runoff and wastewater returns to the oceans. You can also volunteer to help in local coastal or reef cleanups. By keeping our shore and oceans clean, you became the marine crusader. With little efforts from each of us, collectively, the result will be huge. Together, we can be helped our Malaysian reef thrive with beauty for generations. Our oceans need more guardians, the younger generation that pursue interest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM. Our oceans, reef and fish need protectors that not only care, but also take action saving them. I hope in the future, when we go for a swim, snorkeling or diving, we can see our oceans and coral reef continually thriving with fishes swimming beautifully there, just like the birds in the forest. Thank you.